Hare Krishna everyone, we are continuing to read the teachings of Lord Kapila, the book by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 7 Lord Kapila begins to explain self-realization. Text 13 Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Yoga Adhyatmikah Pumsam Mato Nishreya Sayame Atyanto Paratir Yatra Dukhasya Cha Sukhasya Cha Translation The Personality of Godhead answered That yoga system which relates to the Lord and the individual soul which is meant for the ultimate benefit of the living entity and which causes detachment from all happiness and distress in the material world is the highest yoga system. Purport In the material world everyone is striving for some material happiness, but as soon as we get some material happiness there is also material distress. In the material world one cannot have unadulterated happiness. Any kind of happiness one has is contaminated by distress also. For example, if we want to drink milk, we have to bother to maintain a cow and keep her fit to supply milk. Drinking milk is very nice. It is also pleasure, but for the sake of drinking milk, one has to accept so much trouble. The yoga system, as here stated by the Lord, is meant to end all material happiness and material distress. The best yoga, as taught in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna, is Bhakti Yoga. It is also mentioned in the Gita that one should try to be tolerant and not be disturbed by material happiness or distress. Of course, one may say that he is not disturbed by material happiness, but he does not know that just after one enjoys so-called material happiness, material distress will follow. This is the law of the material world. Lord Kapila states that the yoga system is the science of the spirit. One practices yoga in order to attain perfection on the spiritual platform. There is no question of material happiness or distress. It is transcendental. Lord Kapila will eventually explain how it is transcendental, but the preliminary introduction is given here. The attempt in this material world to maximize happiness and minimize distress is called the struggle for existence. Generally, Yoga is practiced to acquire some material profit. There are eight kinds of yogic perfections, siddhis. Anima, Laghima, Prapti, Ishitva, Vashitva, Mahima, Prakamya and Kamavasaita. A real yogi can become smaller than the smallest, lighter than the lightest, bigger than the biggest. Whatever he wants, he can produce immediately in his hand. He can even create a planet. The, these are some of the yoga siddhis. But here it is stated that the supreme yoga system does not aim at material happiness or relief from distresses caused by material inconvenience. Everyone is trying to get out of material distress and gain some happiness. In any case, 
when something is material. There is only so-called happiness and so-called distress. For example, there may be fireworks, fireworks going on, and this may be happiness for someone, but distress for us. Some people are thinking that these fireworks are very enjoyable and we are thinking that they are very inconvenient. That is the material world. On one side there is happiness and on the other side there is distress. Both happiness and distress are actually illusions. In summer, water is happiness, but in winter, it is distress. The water is the same, but at one time it brings happiness, and at another time it brings distress. When a son is born, he brings happiness, but when he dies, he brings distress. In other case, the son is the same. This material world is the world of duality and we cannot understand happiness without distress or distress without happiness. This is therefore called the relative world. Spiritual happiness is above these dualities and that spiritual happiness is the perfection of yoga. Yoga adhyatmikaha. Yoga is the happiness of the soul, and the individual soul can be happy when it is with the super soul, the supreme soul. Nitya nityanam chetanas chetananam. There is the supreme soul, or the supreme living being, and there are many individual souls individual beings. We are many, but the principal living being is one, Krishna. He is the fire, and we are the sparks from that fire. The sparks are illuminated when they are with the original fire. But if the sparks no longer associate with the original fire, they are extinguished. Similarly, our real happiness is in enjoying, enjoying with the Supreme Being. Happiness is being in His company. Krishna is not alone, He is always with His friends, either the gopis or the cowherd boys or with His mother and father. We never find Krishna alone. He may be with Radharani or with his devotees. He's like a king or a president. When one says that the king or president is coming, it is understood that he is not coming alone. He comes with his secretaries, ministers and many others. The word yoga means connection. And Atma means soul. Sometimes it also means mind and body. The material body has nothing to do with the Supreme Being, because the Supreme Being is completely spiritual. He has no material covering. One who thinks that Krishna, the Supreme Being, has a material covering is himself covered by Maya. Krishna does not say that he comes as an ordinary living being. Rather, his advent is totally transcendental. Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tatvataha Bhagavad Gita 4.4 We, therefore, have to learn how Krishna takes his birth, which is not ordinary. If it were ordinary, why should we observe the Janmashtami ceremony? 
his birth is divyam, divine. Everything about Krishna is divine. And if we think that Krishna is like us, we immediately become mudhas, fools. In the words of Bhagavad Gita 9.11, Ava jananti mam mudha manushim tanum ashritam param bhavam ajananto mama bhuta maheshwaram Quote, Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. Unquote. Actually, Krishna is the original Supreme Being, the original Spirit Soul. We are simply minute parts and parcels of Krishna. If we connect with Krishna, we are illuminated, just as Krishna is illuminated. If we fall down from Krishna, our spiritual power and illumination are extinguished. The word yoga means connecting or linking with that original source. Yoga is the Sanskrit word meaning connection and V-yoga means disconnection. All right, we're going to stop here for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. The link to this book is in the description. Please check out our website, shravanamdiaries.com. Yes, please follow the books that we've read so far. Read along with us. Share these links with all of your friends. And we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.